So there's all of this different research that's related to inside and outside elbow pain. Let's now go into those injuries specifically, looking at the prevalence, the characteristics, and different self-assessments that you can do or a partner can do on you to identify these injuries. So let's first start with lateral epicondylitis. This is termed lateral epicondylitis, lateral epicondylosis, or lateral epicondalgia, most commonly known as tennis elbow. This is outside elbow pain. Usually there'll be this area right at the outside of your elbow that you could put a single finger on. Sometimes they'll radiate down as well as into the muscles. And this is an inflammation or an irritation of the tendon as it inserts into the elbow. Now recent research has put this hypothesis at a little bit of a challenge. They've shown when they went in and looked at the tendon itself, there's actually no inflammation or very little. And there's some degeneration of the tendon. So an important part about this injury is a lot of the research actually supports things that strengthen the outside of your elbow and how you hit the tennis ball, how you grip the racket, and all those other things I mentioned earlier may play the largest role in why tennis players have outside elbow pain. Now common characteristics is this point tenderness. You may have this shooting pain down into the back of your forearm and into your wrist and you may even have decreased grip strength. So this is outside elbow pain, tennis elbow, also known as lateral epicondylitis, osis, or algia. Now, how do you identify if this is the condition that you have? Well, you can either self-assess or have a partner assess these areas. And there's very specific muscles that attach to the tendons on the outside of your elbow. And you can stretch these muscles, you can contract these muscles and you can palpate or press into the tendons to see if it generates discomfort. And if any of these tests or assessments do, then it's likely that you have tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. So I want you to watch this video going through the step-by-step -step process of assessing this outside elbow pain. Let's take a look. We're gonna do a series of tests for lateral epicondylosis or outside elbow pain, also known as tennis elbow. You wanna make sure the patient has no pain or symptoms. These are provocative tests. These are gonna reproduce their symptoms. So before we start, just make sure they're pain free. Then we're gonna go through the tests. The first test is a passive stretch. I'm gonna put the patient up into 90 degrees of humeral flexion. I'm gonna grasp onto the distal aspect of their humerus. I'm going to flex their wrist down towards the ground. You can even Move them a little bit towards that pinky side in the ulnar deviation to see if you can reproduce some of that outside elbow pain. It's a passive test. The next set of tests are active tests, testing the contraction of the muscle. to See if contracting the muscle reproduces pain on the outside of the elbow. So this is called Cozen's test. You're gonna place the patient at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. You're gonna stabilize the distal end of their radius and their ulna. You're then going to have them extend their wrist back. You can even move them a little bit towards that thumb side in what's called radial deviation. I'm then gonna come in and press the patient downwards towards the ground. They're gonna resist me. We're now testing the wrist extensor muscles to see if that reproduces any pain or symptoms on the outside of the elbow. And now we're gonna test to see if the supinator muscle is generating any pain or symptoms. The patient can go into supination with their palm upwards. I can stabilize at the elbow and then I can come in with my hand and I'm going to be turning Artem into pronation or trying to press his palm down towards the ground and he's going to turn on his supinator muscle to try and keep his palm lifted. Keep him in that position. Artem, don't let me turn you and hold, hold, hold. Hold. You can test his finger extensors to see if that generates any symptoms at his lateral epicondyle. So I can come in and apply pressure on the distal end of his finger or the tip of his finger. Don't let me move you. Hold, hold, hold. Excellent. You can actually do that on each finger to see if that generates his symptoms. Now there's one last test when he's in this position. We can relax his palm down. I'm going to come in and trace the extensor mass of the elbows right into their insertion. 
into the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and I'm going to palpate or press in that position to see if that elicits or causes any pain or symptoms. So as I mentioned, you can perform these on yourself doing a self-manual muscle test, or you can perform this on someone else or have someone perform on you as an assisted muscle test, muscle stretch, as well as palpation. Now here was a study that was interesting. This was a study of 16 tennis players. They looked at wrist kinematics, grip pressures, muscle EMG, and they looked at all of this during the backhand stroke. And what they identified was really interesting. Wrist flexion, which is bending the wrist forward, at 13 degrees at ball contact, with a wrist that moves further into flexion, was a characteristic that was related to novice tennis players that had elbow pain. And wrist extension at 23 degrees, moving further into wrist extension, was a characteristic of expert tennis players who had less pain in their elbow. So what this showed us was wrist mechanics may contribute to tennis elbow in tennis players. And if you have some faults with your stroke, if your wrist excessively flexes or bends forward during ball contact, or if your wrist extends and stabilizes and further extends, this may be a determining factor whether or not you have elbow pain. And if your wrist flexes forward, then you may be more likely to develop outside elbow pain. If your wrist maintains its extension, you may be less likely to developing elbow pain. And in particular, lateral epicondylosis, this outside elbow pain.